Good day, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. We're here in Norway, where we're going to carry on with our tour up the coast, heading up to the north end of the mainland of Norway. And we're heading from here, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right, mold up to Trondheim. Fairly short flight, uh, but uh, we should see some nice fjords, and the weather is looking absolutely stunning for the flight today. And uh, yeah, so hi to everybody in chat. We got uh, Kevin, Nick, Brian, Dark. Uh, they're all out here on the ramp with us, gonna do the flight. And Captain Magazine on, who's let us know that, uh, yes, he lives near the airport here and it is stunning weather out there today. Uh, before we get started, I just want to show everybody something. So I'm gonna pop in and then pop back out in the drone. I see Dark has uh, come in, and he is in the new Caribou Connect livery for the Twin Otter. We'll be seeing more of this in a, uh, another stream that's coming up, or series that's coming up in a bit. But uh, he's decided to roll it out, so it is a fabulous looking airplane. Of course, uh, Dark has created it and it is available to supporters of the channel on the discord so looking absolutely fabulous i'm continuing on with the livery that we started the series with which is the widero twin otter and again we're here at uh mold airport so let's hop on board and uh we can start uh getting all set up all right first thing I'm gonna do is start my tracker so I don't forget that for the VA as I usually forget it I'm gonna start getting things set up here we'll get the locks out we'll go up on to the overhead panel let's get the uh, emergency exit armed and we'll get the entrance light on for everybody. We'll get the fasten seat belts and those smoking lights on. There we go. And we can uh, get the electrics on as well. Everything is up and running. So I'll grab the current Metar. Uh, 14 minutes ago. I'll throw it into the chat. There we go. So as you can see, uh, Windsor T60 at 14, ceiling and visibility are okay, and it's 16 degrees. That caught my eye when I first saw it, and I went, that can't be 16 degrees. But apparently it is. And 1042 on the barrel, so we'll, that's all set in. And we're good to go. So before we push, let's take a look at our route for today. And we'll see what is going on. So we're basically flying out on a SID and then directly connecting to a star. Uh, that's what I've got here, uh, Captain uh, Magazine. This is the update. So not sure. We'll see how it goes. I know they've changed a few things. I read the, the uh, change log. Um... I didn't see anything about sounds, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Interesting stuff about propellers and that. We'll see how she flies. It's going to be interesting. So here we are at the airport. We're taking off on runway 25, so we're going to uh, basically come out. We're going to have to uh, backtrack down, and then we'll take off. We're then flying out on the Nelsu 1 Bravo departure. So we're going to fly out. We're going to make the turn and turn again and basically fly past the airport. Climbing out all the way, all the way up here to Ipalu and then over to Nelsu. And at Nelsu, we're going to join the arrival. So we have to be above 12,000, which is why I'm going up to 13,000. We're going to join the arrival here, fly over to Afghan, down to Adexa, and then we'll be making this curving approach around here and then over to Zilda at 6,000 feet. And then from Zilda, We'll be making a right turn, heading up to Tikmu, where we'll intercept the ILS for the arrival into Trotheim. And then once we're there, it'll be a left-hand departure off the runway. 
and we're going to be parking over on this side of the um, terminal which will put us down here in these uh, positions here so 28 27 26 25 24 in that left hand line there that's what we're doing and that is the plan for today So, we'll quickly go through our before start stuff and get ourselves ready, and we'll start engines after we push. So, the parking brake is set, emergency fuel switches are set to normal, fuel selectors on normal, engine boost pumps are both off, radio master while the radios are on. Now I've turned them on, the cabin lights and signs are on. We've let the people on board, we'll put the position light on. I don't know why the anti-collision light is on. If I, oh, I had a switch left on down on my yoke. So anti-collision light is off. That's fine. Pedo heat is off. Generator switches are off. Flaps are up. Fuel levers are in cutoff. Propeller levers are in feather power levers are back connection switch is in normal we'll turn on the uh windshield heat actually now we won't we don't need it today we're good uh we'll turn on the flight compartment bands we'll get the uh, air to auto i think we're ready to push so let's uh call up the tool back push bar and then here comes uh our diligent ramp worker is going to give us a push and uh, basically what we're going to do is we are going to push back throw our tail up over this way and then we should be able to swing around out here and head up to the end of the runway and uh, this is going to take a minute or two of fiddly adjustment while they get it hooked up but as the weather is looking absolutely stunning out here mountains all around us and I can report uh, if anyone's curious the new pushback update has uh, had an effect uh, I flew over three hours in the a3 3900 and not a stutter or a, gl or a, a glitch or a audio stutter nothing so it looks like uh, that's fixed and it should be good. So if you ever do this and you don't have the proper cart and you get to this point where I release the parking brake and we got the hold, you just click on the hold and it'll start the push. So we'll see if it pushes us back to where we should go. And then we can do the engine start. You can hear that wind blowing down here. Yeah, so you can see that little cutout here. There's an extra pad. That's where we're aiming to go into. Not doing too bad. Total distance is about 108 miles. There we go. And it should go back slightly. Oh, no, it's going to leave us there. Okay. That's fine. We're uh, close enough. We can just turn out here, and there's the runway right there. All right, so let's get the engine started. So we're going to be starting engine number two first. Uh, so, boost pump is on, and starting right engine. Just listening to the sounds, see if they did make any changes. Stuff like that set startup is rather loud. Five, six, 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 or actually, it should be. Uh, Five 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 six into the transponder, and we'll add the fuel. 
Yeah, it's still too abrupt. So ideally the prop would be a feather. I was playing with them earlier and I know it, it kind of kicked it out. So if we do that, it should bring it back into feather, but we'll see. Maybe not. That's all right. So that engine's up and running. We'll put on the right and we'll go outside and listen to this one. So you should be able to hear it chugging away. We can get rid of the uh, pushback screen as well now. See, I'm wondering if the beacon light, that's not flashing. I believe that's the anti-collision light. Go. Forgot there's a fuel button. If I go to anti collision, is that now flashing up there? Yeah. Alright, so we have both engines started. Alright, so both generators are now on. Engine instruments. Are looking good on both sides. Radio is on. Transponder is on standby. Gyros and everything are set. Make sure all the lights are on. Altimeters and clocks are set. All right. So quick uh, across the board. We're not going to need the uh, auto heat. We can turn the entrance light off now. That's all set. Uh, lighting is good. We'll get the bleeds on both sides. Taxi light, pedo heat coming on. Oops. Flight compartment fans. So it's going to be, uh, we'll get the strobes on now since we're almost there. In fact, there's the threshold right there. So landing lights coming on for both and we're good to taxi. So parking brake off, props will go full forward. And we're gonna go to flight idle on the fuel. And we'll uh, taxi out. We are going off on the, uh, uh, let me see, Dark. It is the Nelsu 1 Bravo. And then we're arriving on the Nelsu 2 Mike. Basically, we fly out to Nelsu and then fly in. And as you can see, the glide path is clear. There's no one inbound. <clears throat> oh, really, Nick? Interesting. I wish they'd do another little round of adjustments to the sound files. Turn down the volume of the engine, start inside, get the sound outside so you can hear it there and then just blend them a little bit better. All right, so the brakes are working.
come down we can see the uh, gyros everything's moving the way they should including the compass <clears throat> so we're here at the turnaround So flaps going to 10, auto feather armed, altitude set as mentioned we're going to go up to 13,000 and we're going to want to be climbing at about 85 to 95 knots, anti ice not required, autopilot is all checked. Fuel quantity is checked. Fuel pumps are both on. Trim tabs are set for takeoff. Instruments are checked. Uh, radios, comms are set. Propeller levers are fully forward. Auto feather arm flats are set to 10 degrees. Let's stop that servo push. Pedo heat is confirmed on. NTA is not required. Controls are free and clear. You can see the aircraft moving as we move the surfaces because of the wind from the engines. Transponder is on out. Landing lights are on. Caution lights are on. Runway and heading is confirmed and we are good to go. Alright. Bringing the engines up. And brakes released. Let's see, 45 on the engine uh, torque pressure. Now we were lined up a little bit off center. We'll just stay where we are. That's fine. There's 80 knots, and we're up. Obviously, we didn't need the whole distance. Climbing out, so we'll start getting that uh, nose up. So we're going to go GPS over to nav mode. Put the autopilot on. Vertical speed. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Vertical speed will go to a thousand feet per minute and into nav mode. Got to remember to the sequence for hitting these buttons. Sometimes it gets out of whack a little bit. All right, flaps going up and uh, we can change our climb to our max climb rate of 16. 100 feet per minute. We'll bring the engines back to or up to 45 and the props back to 90 for the climb. Here we go. Looking good. So once again, climb checks, flaps are up, auto feather is deselected, climb power is set, landing lights are coming off, taxi light is off, and 
No, best climb. They've, they have changed the way the airplane operates. See, we're still at 120. So the best climb rate is actually at 85 knots. So we're going to go to 2,000 feet per minute. See what that slows us down to. Climbing out nicely. Hey, Wiv Tracker. Oh, let me get back inside where it's not as noisy. Uh, hey, thanks for the raid. Greatly appreciated there, Notorious Q7. Hi. How are you guys over on Twitch doing today? Hope you're all well. Thanks for coming along for today's flight. And uh, that reminds me, while we're early into the flight, I'll throw the Discord link up into both chats. I don't know when the bot's going to do it. Sometimes they take a while. Well, it would help if I spelled it right as well. So all the flights we do here on the channel, all the streams, are all community flights either a multiplayer or a I mean, everyone's welcome to join in. We got uh, about five of us here today flying along, so uh, you're more than welcome. And on the Discord is where you can find all the information for when we're flying, where we're flying, and what is going on. So I just threw the link into the Twitch uh, chat as well if anyone wants to drop on over. I'm doing good. Um, with Tracker. Uh, it's a nice Saturday, enjoying myself, and a uh, great way to start the day with a nice uh, flight here. There's a seven and a half thousand feet. We're almost down to the waypoint where we're going to turn back and head back over the airport. Again, we're climbing up to make sure we're high enough above the uh, the mountains here. So our uh, you can see our airspeed has come down to 80 knots, which is a bit low. So we'll bring our climb rate back to 1600 again. Get that nose down a little bit and get that airspeed up. Some beautiful views of Norway here. You can see the frozen ice. I don't know, 16 uh, degrees on the ground and I'm not sure how much snow is left. Uh, Megazine on, you're in the area there. How much snow have you got left on the ground or is it pretty much gone for you now? So we should begin our turn around any second now. All right, so we're still not getting our uh, speed up, so we're going to uh, bring that right down to a thousand now. see our uh, engine power is coming back so we're gonna come up on the throttles again make sure we're holding up 45 there's Nick ahead of us there's 10,000 feet so we got 3,000 to go so it'll take us three minutes to get up there Uh, yes, uh, we passed uh, Bergen on the way up. We started this series, we started down in Copenhagen and uh, <clears throat> we flew down, uh, well, through Denmark up into the bottom of Sweden, then across to Norway, and we're working our way up the coast. So we hit Bergen, uh, I think, uh, a week ago. And now we're heading, uh, continuing our little jaunt up the coastline here. There we go. Speed's coming up. So there's a great difference there when you're if you're watching the power. There's 11,000 feet coming up. You can see the beautiful view. 
Let's see if we, we got everybody up. There's Kevin. I'd say Brian's up. And uh, there's Dark Fury below us. And there's the airport we just left, right on the uh, right on the edge of the fjord. Ah, thanks, and thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. You have a great day there, Whip Tracker. All right, so we've got about 1,500 feet to go, and we'll be up to our altitude for cruise. There's 12,000. There's a thousand to go. And uh, we'll get the radio on and get some music going in the background. Let's see if I can find something in my uh, selection. So cruise is coming up. See the altitude alert went on and when we were a thousand to go. Our speed's coming up. So we're gonna bring the power torque pressure back to 40 inches. And then the props, we're gonna bring them right back down to 76%. There we go. And then we'll just reset our power to 40 and we're good for the cruise fuel is good fuel flow is very good very efficient up at this higher altitude Air speed's a little bit slower than it used to be, so it looks like the modifications they've done to the props and everything um, are having an impact. So we're going to tune in uh, our ILS and set up any nav aids we want as Croft's reference. So the ILS frequency is 109.9. All right, so 109.9, we'll put that in for VOR1, nav1. One. Nav2, down here, uh, they don't have a VOR at the field that I can see. Let me do a quick uh, check of the charts. There is an offset. 109.6. So down here on Nav 2, we'll do 109. Point six. There we go. I'll flip that one. So that's now on nav two. Nav two will show on this one. This is a swinging bar. It's basically a deviation needle on the flight path. This will show nav one, and we're gonna do the ADF, which will be over here. And there is an ADF we can tune in. It is the VNS ADF 
five. So we'll come down. There's three, five, eight. So we'll flick that over to ADF 385. That'll display over here. And what we can do, because it is on the track inbound, which is 266, we can uh, turn this to 266 now. And I'll just uh, confirm that we're flying in on the right heading. To be there. Now, if I, let me just see again where the. Uh, Okay, we can tune the uh, VOR in the same way. It should give us a similar uh, type of thing. So we'll turn this around to 266 as well. I think it's slightly more south, but I can't tell on the chart I'm looking at. And it is only a uh, rough guide anyway. There we go. So there's all our nav aids set up and our platform altitude when we get there is going to be Timku at 4700 feet and then down after that we go down to 4000 for the intercept at Nevos. So that's all our nav aids now set up and we are good there. We're at 40, 76. Fuel burn is good, it's about 255 per side, pounds per side. Pressures and temperatures are all good and fuel quantity is excellent. Nick's leading the way, ahead of us there. And there's the rest of the guys behind us. So you can see we're flying up the glacier there. Basically we're coming up to uh, another big one where we're going to come in, inland a bit and then arc over. And then we're going to turn down and fly down the glacier, descending in between the mountains and everything. Looks like Nick hit the next uh, turn point. Yeah, and we're turning as well. So we're heading up to Apollo now. We're still on the departure. Hey Pat, how are you doing? Hope you're well. And Pat, I just saw you posted on the Discord that you're doing Seattle to London in the 747. Ah, it's a long flight. Definitely a long flight. How you liking the 747? Oh, getting a little bit of wind as we uh, come across the hills here. Views at the side there, you can see the uh, North Sea once you get off the ice flow. Definitely getting mechanical turbulence coming off these hills. I mean, we got peaks going up to seven, eight thousand uh, in this area, so it's going to be knocking the wind around pretty good. As you can see, fairly rugged area out here.
some nice views out the back. In the legroom seat at the back of the plane here. Uh, let's trying to get one where you can get a nice view. Ah, that's not bad. Yeah, well, hopefully you can find the combination that works for you and uh, allows you to uh, get these longer flights in. It is frustrating when you can't do it, so. But it's all good. I can't wait for the Tailwinds guys to get the uh, version 0.7 from Fly-By-Wire up and running in the A330. That would be great. I mean, it's, a, it's a decent airplane as it is, but it would be great to get that. It would be nice to get a nice long distance uh, Airbus flying. We've had the uh, 320, and if we could get a, you know, the 350 or the, you know, good pay, pay wear 330 for the long distance stuff, but then we'd have the short distance with the A320. It'd be nice. And an even shorter distance with the uh, uh, BAE 146. I'm assuming Nick's going to be giving us a full breakdown of the Concorde because uh, I assume, Nick, you're going to be picking it up when it releases. I'm not sure when it releases. Soon, though, I believe. So if anyone wants to join in, <coughs> sorry, tomorrow after the Pan Am flight, I'll do a, I'll do a, a reboot and then uh, I'm going to load up the A330 in Bahrain for the second leg of the um, of Blue Gaming's F1 tour and uh, kind of be doing the leave after the race thing. I think tomorrow we're going to be flying like I said, the cargo A330. It's only a couple hours, but uh, give me another flight, not airplane. And with it working, So you'd, you'd prefer it to have the INS? He threw the Gatwick in the Concorde? Repositioning flight? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so tomorrow, I'll, uh, like I said, after the uh, Pan Am stream, we'll do. I'm gonna do the uh, leg two. 
for night three, I worked it out uh, using Singapore as the halfway point. So as long as the 330 keeps working, it'll be uh, from Jeddah to Singapore, then Singapore on another day. We'll do the second run. Uh, Brian, we'll do those on multiplayer just because I'm not sure about the aircraft. And I, and I don't want it to be, I don't want to be on VATSIM. Well, one of the main things is with these longer legs as well on those that series. When I'm doing those flights and I'm not streaming, I like to be able to get up and do things. And it's hard to do when you've got active ADC in the area. Because uh, you got to kind of stay with the airplane. So um, I'm thinking of uh, just doing it in multiplayer. So if i got to get up and go do something, I can do it and not have to worry about... Uh, not have to worry about all the uh, fluffing around with the air traffic controllers. Oh, you think? Uh, yeah. Well, it was, it was also used to cool the wings, if I remember right. Right? They they move fuel out to the wings to uh, to cool it down, and then uh, pump it back in to warm it up. It's. Um, Yeah, maybe they're doing it more of a simplified version. Well, they're good. Not sure what the uh, the issue is with the INS and the SIM. I guess maybe there's something in the back that still doesn't work. Although, I can't remember. Was it PMDG? They were a little bit critical on, uh, on the Sobo in the recent thing about the 737 when they were talking about how they're doing. They said they're disappointed that you know, they're not getting some of the stuff they need to make the airplane as good as it can be, and they seem to be getting blocked by it. So one of the things, like the weather stuff, um, so, I don't know. Yeah, if you're into doing all that stuff yourself, and the INS navigation, which is different than just plugging it in the route and letting them fly it, I can see where that'd be a little bit disappointing. It was interesting to see the the, the, the write-up that they wrote in the um, their update. Uh, it's almost like they're calling out a Sobo publicly and saying, hey, look, we're trying to do this and you guys are, are not cooperating or, or not playing nice, so... Come on. 
Looks like Kevin's uh, flown past me. Jump back inside here. So we're on our way to Nelsu, which is the exit point of the Sid and entry point of the Star. And we do have the above 12,000 foot restriction. So, uh, it's good, we'll hit that, and uh, we're well above. So after that, we'll stay uh, 12,000 feet all the way down, and then we'll descend to 7,000 for Adexa. So we've got a little bit of uh, distance to run here. So is that 14, 28, 48, about well, 49 miles after Nelsu. We do want to see uh, see the train and everything, so we'll we'll hold off until we get around at Exu, and then we'll descend down. That'll be a little bit bumpy down there as well, as I said, with the uh, mechanical turbulence coming over the uh, terrain. There's nothing wrong with getting excited for a It's one of the types of turbulence you can get. Of course, there's heat turbulence, which you get in the summer. Hot air coming off the ground, bumping you around. There's wind shear turbulence as well. Well, that, yeah, there is that, but there's also things like they've locked certain things away from developers. Um, and, I, and I get the feeling that's a little bit more along the lines of what a soul board complaining about. It's not not change the... Uh, it's the Nelsu 2 mic arrival, Dark. It's not change the sim to suit us. I think it's more of, hey, you know, there's a weather system. We need to be able to access it for certain things. But they've they've locked it away, and that that's the excuse that uh, Aerosoft is giving for the uh, for the for the CRJ and stuff. Why there's no weather radar in there, and so they can't access the information to do it properly. So, well, they probably did. And I and I think it may. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it may come down to the same fact that, you know, you're, you've created a, a sim that's extremely heavily dependent on third-party participation in it, and that you're not being free with it to allow third parties to, to develop things properly. So I think that's part of the issue. And Nick, yeah, licensing purposes, yeah, there's that. So. I think it's just the usual, uh, you've got people wanting to do the best they can and different views on how that, how to go about it and they're not 100% complimentary. So, we'll see. Alright, looks like uh, Nick's made the turn there at Nelsu. Yeah, 44 miles to go.
trying to remember all the views I've got set up in here. Uh, we got uh, that lovely view. That's not bad. All right, it looks like we've hit Nelson. We're making that slight left turn. Absolutely looking gorgeous down there. Another of my bucket list items is uh, do the Norwegian cruise up the fjords. I gotta say, my I do have a large bucket for my bucket list. So many things. Almost forgot my thermos in the back. So we're heading towards the Afghan waypoint. <laughs> More of a barrel than a bucket, yeah. No, Derek, and I, and I get that. It's just that critical components, like uh, <clears throat> things like weather radar, terrain radar for airliners and, and bigger aircraft. I mean, it's a, it's a major item for these airplanes and, and to not be able to properly implement it is kind of a downer. The airport is uh, actually off in the direction of that AE320 down there. You know, he might actually be at that airport. So, that's kind of where we're headed. Everything is looking good. Cruise power setting is looking good. Still at 40%, still at 70 or 40 inches, 76% on the props. Temps, pressures, fuel flow are all looking good. Fuel quantity is looking good. No, Dark, I know. The CRJ is kind of uh, sitting there now. And, then, and, and until I think they actually solve this weather issue, I don't think they're going to touch it again. They're, uh, they're busy with the uh, 146. Oh, that's right, that's just flight. I don't know what Airsoft's working on now.
Yeah. True, Nick, but it's kind of like saying, hi, I, I've come up with this new uh, integrated radio TV thing, or I want to put a radio in the car, and, it, and you know, we need access into the connections. And it's not like they're saying we need you to put in these types of connections for us. They're just kind of saying we need access to the connections and the car manufacturer going, oh yeah, you can put the radio in, but we're not going to tell you what the connections are, work around it. I mean, eh, that's a little iffy. But it is what it is. Yeah, Pat, it's Iberia, so I'm not sure what it all entails. I, I believe Spain and Portugal is the two there. I mean, if they're doing Spain, they might as well do Portugal. It's kind of right there. Seven and a half miles out from VA seven one five. Yeah, twenty seconds on Tuesday. Monday is the spring equinox. Yeehaw. That's uh nice to see come up nice and quickly. Got a little bit of a crosswind going up here. Not too bad, though. <clears throat> we seem to be off by about eight degrees. So the NDB is now uh, picking up. Let's see, it's pointing off to about our 1030. Yeah, well, there is that as well, Dark. It's how much of a cut are they getting off of the cells from the store is the, uh, the big thing. The airport elevation is 56 feet. Oh, Kevin was up there. Kevin's the spirit. Kevin got eaten by the multiplayer glitch? Nope. Kevin's going down to look at the snow below us. See the guys are behind us still. Oh yeah. They're all starting their descents. So when we're 10 miles out from VA 715, we're gonna begin our descent because we do have uh, this arc curve pattern to fly. 
so we'll be uh, descending down around that curve. So I'm good with that. And the initial descent will be down to 6,000 feet. And we should get there by Zelda. Well, that E320 is up and running. The airport's uh, off and that could be it there. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I think I'm right above you now, Kevin. So we're going to go into about a thousand foot per minute descent and bring the power back to 30 inches of pressure and that should keep us about the same airspeed, give or take. See the we're gently getting buffeted around a little bit here. It's not too bad. So let's dial six thousand feet in. Almost, uh, almost there. Should be on the ground in about 20 minutes, according to uh, the GPS. Getting a long flight, but we are uh, getting up and over a lot of rough terrain here. Should be a beautiful approach in. Just a few clouds in the area. All right, we're through. So we're going to. Uh, Start down at a thousand feet per minute and we'll bring the power back to 30 inches. Down we go. Of course the engines aren't perfect so we gotta kind of tweak each one. We don't want to go above 140, so we'll just keep an eye on it. It's coming down, Kevin. Speed's creeping, we'll just come back slightly on the power. About 27, 28 inches. So we're four miles out from uh, Adexa. Uh, that's when we begin that arc around. You can see Nick's already on it. It's 11,000 feet.
Yeah, I got a ground speed of 188 right, uh, 186 right now. So if you're below that, I should stay in front of you. So there we are, we're beginning our turn. Head around this uh, curve here. All right, so there's 10,000 feet. Throw on the landing lights. Taxi lights on. Let everybody in the back know we're uh, into our final descent. And we're now flying away from the airport, as you can see by the NDB indicator. wonderfully scenic countryside, all lovely and snow covered. There's Kevin back there. Brian and Dark. Yeah, I think we're kind of heading out this way. We're going to go down this valley. It's 8,000 feet, 2,000 to go. And that 2,000 is our uh, minimum descent altitude for this section of the uh, legs. 23 miles from the airport. That is not uh, track miles, that is direct two. And of course we're currently still flying away, uh, but at a shallower angle. As we slowly curve around on this loop. I say the GPS is working very well for this one. I think at this time we can uh, turn off the radio. A thousand to go. Uh, Nick's still there, Brian. I can see him. close to the ground, so 6,000 feet is going to be good to uh, level off at. Still dealing with a bit of wind. See we're on a bit of an angle here. Getting bounced around a little bit. So there are plenty of, uh, if I remember right, turn off points. You should be able to get off at either Alpha 6 or Alpha 5 uh, without too much problem. So we shouldn't be waiting too long for the runway to get cleared. All 
right, so there's 6,000 feet, bringing the power back up to 40 inches. Keep our cruise speed up. Well, I thought they were fixing it on the last sim update, apparently not. So I'm hearing sim update 9 and or, and or 10. So April. It is annoying. Although I will say it's been better since sim update 8 than it has in a, been for a while. But I know it still does happen occasionally. So we're going to be making the turn now towards uh, Zelda. It's going to be a pretty hard left turn. Oh, we've lost the NDB. Ooh, oh, bumpy here over the over the hills. Ten mile run to Zilda, and then we uh, will be making the turn up towards the intercept point for the ILS. Point we can descend down to 4,700 feet as soon as we make that turn. NDB is uh, being picked up again. Seven miles out. Looks like Nick's making that turn now. community down there, that's pretty cool. Still 23 miles out. I think uh, just at the far side of these higher ridges here, we should hit the turn point. There's the waterway we're flying over, shown on the GPS.
right, so 4,700, we will dial in. There we go. And once we make the turn at Zelda, we'll start heading down. Once we do make the turn and get stable, we'll go into heading mode and set up for the ILS capture. <clears throat> Still 2,500 feet above the ground minimum. Uh, the needle hasn't appeared on the uh, radar altimeter. So we're doing pretty good. Well, I think we're just above 2,500 feet. I saw it just for a second there. And uh, I believe the airport should be pretty much straight ahead. Uh, slightly off to the right down in that valley. Or 2,500 feet above the tops of these hills here. And again, we'll be turning any second now. Just 2,000 feet. As we bounce around, there's the turn. We're off to Timku. Start down a dozen feet a minute. We'll bring the power back to 30 inches. Just kind of again hold that airspeed. Get the heading. Plug in, go over to heading mode, we go over to V-lock, two sixty six on the localizer. Go up there, See the glide slopes coming in. That's the valley we're going to fly down. <clears throat> Looking for movement on the needle. It's one mile out. Approach mode, so localizer is capturing. We're leveling off at 4,700 feet, so power coming back up to 40 inches. Oh, there's the airport ahead. Glide slope is moving. So we're level up 4,700, we're on the localizer, so 40 inches on the props, or on the throttles, 
props going full forward. Power is now back to 35 inches. That's good to see. Reacting properly. Glide slope's coming in. Landing lights are confirmed on. Taxi light is confirmed on. And we'll keep the speed up on our descent. Watch for glide slope captured. It is armed. So fuel quantity has been checked. Caution uh, lights are on. Anti ice not required. Signs are set. Landing lights are on. Glide slope intercept. Glide slope captured. Power back to 30 inches. Okay, we're going to try to hold for uh, 140 until we're about uh, six miles out, and then we'll start to slow down. Oh, Kevin, what happened? You got passed by two different airplanes here. It's like a race. You're falling behind. Alright, so we're on the glide slope. We're on the localizer. Airport is in sight. It's going to be a left-hand exit. Can't see it on that side. Uh, I'll have another one really set up. Well, you would be getting some nice views out of the uh, passenger compartment. Look at that. That is amazing. Slow and steady wins the race? Okay. So, Mr. Proach, climb on 266 uh, to 4,000 feet and then right turn direct to the NDB, which we've got dialed in here, and hold at 4700 so our altitude is set for that we're getting train warnings of course because we're flying over the hills here and we are seven miles out from the runway keeping the speed up because dark is behind us markers. That should be the outer marker flashing, not the uh, inner marker. Six miles. Start bringing the power back. Gonna slow them down a little bit. Gonna slow down fairly quickly. Twenty inches We're down to one hundred and ten. Uh, 
I'm going to come into here and zero visibility. Do you just keep hearing the terrain warnings? As we have four miles, we'll configure for landing. That way we should be established by about three. It's four miles. Power back to 10 inches. Props are fully forward. Speed's coming down, there's a hundred knots. It's 95 knots, flaps one. Flaps two. Eighty five knots, flaps three. Landing flap set. Keep her to 80 knots. Oh, 15 inches on the pressures. Hey, there's the power lines mod. I should be looking down as we're on final. There we go. Power lines there. Uh, looks cool. All right. Concentrate. Five hundred feet coming up. Eighty five knots. I have the aircraft. Welcome to Trondheim. We'll get off here at Alpha 6. And we can taxi over to the ramp. Alright, props coming back into Low range. Flaps coming all the way up. And we'll turn off the landing lights. Oh, dark right in behind me.
kind of wallowing about here. Watch our speed. We're gonna go down. Uh, well, I assumed we were gonna go down hotel, but it looks like that's not an option here. And here we are. So flap swap anti-aces on lane lights are up transponder. We'll go back to standby. Trim tabs are stunt and the lights. So parking brake. Set power is back to full idle. Feathering the props. We well, should see them come up and speed right go right down to feather position. There we go. Generators are now off. And fuel levers. shut down all right so we'll go on to the overhead the uh, strobe lights can come off fans can come off bleed air is off that goes off all is off off across the board disarm that window heat can come off Fuel pumps are off. There we go. The aircraft is shut down. Let's get a nice view here. As we close out, we'll come down beside Nick and get a view up the line of aircraft. As Kevin and Brian are coming in. Well, thank you very much for flying with us. Always a pleasure to have you. If you've been watching, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, hopefully if you, you'll join us on uh, the next one tomorrow. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always ask or come over to the Discord. Let me throw that up one more time for those that may have missed it. I'll grab it out of the YouTube chat, put it directly into the Twitch chat so the link is actually there. And uh, you can see it. As I always say, our flights are community flights. If you want to join in, all the information is on the Discord. And it's uh, always good to see new people and have people come along and join us. On the thing. Yeah, I'm running default scenery. Uh, I did. I read it on flightsim.to and there was, seemed to be a lot of issues here and there and I wasn't sure about the updates and it had been a while since there had been updates so I just left it for this one anyway uh, looks like somebody just did something I'm just waiting for the notification to pop up I think it was a follow over on Twitch it was a follow over on Twitch has he thank you for the follow hope you enjoyed and uh, tomorrow we were are back uh, same time at 1300 hours as we head off in the uh, DC-6 on the next leg of our round the world trip we are flying from Hong Kong's Kai Tech Airport over to Manila in the Philippines and again information for that flight is now posted on the discord so I hope to see you again take care thanks for flying and we'll see you next time bye for now